Welcome back. Babe Dr. Dan here. I really hope you can't hear all the uh, noise going on in the background. Uh, other people in the building being loud Friday night, so that happens sometimes. Um, more specifically, I hope that YouTube doesn't hear it and give me some copyright strike because somebody else in the building is playing music. Um, so, today we're doing something a little different. My uh, review video for Wednesday got a little um, pushed back because something something goofed up on the uh, on the filming. Uh, it just ended up black, no no picture, just um, just audio. So I don't know what happened there. So um, today instead of doing a review, I'm going to be doing a uh, a safety video. So. Um, Hopefully it works this time and it will help me get back onto schedule. So, Vape Safety Part 5. Mech mods and hybrids. So, basically your, your regulated devices, your RXs, your Segelis, your Evix, your all that sort of thing, they have circuitry in them to prevent a, sh a short circuit. Um... And, and chipsets, that sort of thing, to, to prevent the the device from short circuiting and uh, and and bad stuff happening that way. Um, so so your your mod's not going to blow up if you have uh, the if you have the, the the resistance too low. It'll just say atomizer short or atomizer not found, something like that. Now, in something like a noisy cricket or a tugboat. Or a rage box. They don't have that kind of thing. These are these are all examples that I'm going to go through of unregulated devices. So first up, Noisy Cricket. It's a series mod. So it's got two batteries running in series. Basically, you've got your negative end of one battery on the switch end here. Going down to the positive end on a little metal seesaw in there. Which goes to the negative end of the other battery over here. And then the positive end touches your atomizer because it's a hybrid device. Um, so what you're getting, sorry about that, what you're getting off that is double the voltage and the same amp limit of one of the batteries. So if you're using two 20 amp cells in there, you've got a total amp limit of 20 amps. And your output voltage of... 8.4 volts means that the lowest safe build you can do is 0 0.42 ohms. Now, I went over that in my ohms law video, and if you didn't get a chance to check that out, it's worth taking a look. Uh, and it's worth just getting to know ohms law a little bit. Um, that will prevent your device from, from venting your batteries. Um, that being said, it's not the only thing that you need to worry about. I'll go over that when I get to the hybrids. Now a single cell device here, my tugboat. Now that, you've got 4.2 volts at 20 amps if you're using a 20 amp cell, which I am in this. It's an LG HE2. I'm using LG HG2s in this. Again, 20 amp cells, but... Uh, higher milliamp hour. Now in here, I'm also using more 20 amp cells, just to keep the theme. Um, so I've got LG HD2s in here again. It's a triple parallel. So, now that means each cell is taking a third of the amp load. So you can build to much, much lower. Now I've got a really kind of play it on the safe side build in there. Uh, with just some 5 wrap 22 gauge. It comes out to 0.17-ish. Well, well, well within the, the safety constraints of this device. Now I'm going to pop this open again here, and I'm going to show you quickly just how it's laid out. So, you've got all three of your negative contacts there, all three of your positive there. They're wired through through the switch over here, and then to the atomizer. Your atomizer on this, unlike the other two devices, has a spring-loaded 510 pin. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but... 
as I screw the atomizer in, this pin down here pushes down. If I unscrew it, it comes up. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in there. But in any case, that means you can use pretty well any atomizer with it. Um, because that, that pin there is smaller than the center post on the atomizer. So you're going to be able to fit just about anything on there without having to worry too much. Now, hybrid devices. Now, that's the, that's the spring-loaded 510. That's the, the, the safe bet there. But if you're a hardcore or you want less voltage drop, then you might want to go for something like this. Now, I've got a hybrid top right here so I can show you. So now, as you can see, there's just a hole going right through with some 510 threading on it and a couple of holes for battery venting. Those are most often plugged up by putting an atomizer on top of it. But as you can see, if I screw my twisted meshes on here, dun, 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 you can see that the 510 pokes through. So you're making direct battery to atomizer contact with the positive post. Um, in that kind of case, you want to be really careful that you have a center pin on the post that protrudes further than the threads so that you're not making a dead short with your battery. Something like, say, the Eric here. This is the Eric clone by Tobacco. It doesn't protrude at all. In fact, mine is actually pushed in a little bit. So that you want to use with something with a 510 connector. So for example, now that's from my Stingray. Now here's the top, the other top cap that comes with the Stingray. This is what's called a floating pin. So it just kind of like pops in and out. Push it in, you can pop it out. Push it in and pop it out. Now what happens with that is when you screw in your atomizer, like so, it's going to eventually make contact with the pin, and it's going to push that out just ever so slightly. Because this is a very flush pin. I'm going to grab my, I'm going to grab my Aeolus because that's got a nice protruding pin just so that you can see a little better how it pushes it out. Screw that down, I can feel it's making a connection with it now, and it's slowly pushing it out. Can you see how much further that's pushed out now than it was? Probably not. It's not very much of a difference, but it is a difference. So, that actually pushes out that way, and then when you push the battery up against it, with the, with the, uh, the switch housing on the stingray screws up to take up for battery rattle and that will push against that which will make contact against your atomizer on the end on the other end of it but as you can see that has a hugely protruding pin this is the aeolus clone by tobacco and it's it's got a ridiculously protruding center pin definitely definitely safe with your hybrid mods um so, like I said, Noisy Cricket here is a series hybrid mod. So you're getting 8.4 volts at uh, at 20 amps because I'm using 20 amp cells. You want to be careful that you make sure you know Ohm's Law when you're working with any mechanical device as well as really make sure that you're paying attention to the 510 pin when working with a hybrid device like the Noisy Cricket, like the Tugboat. Um, so, that being said, I'm sorry if I sound a little off. I have a bit of a stuffed up nose thing going on. I don't feel like I'm sick, but my nose is crazy plugged right now. So if, you, if I sound a little off, that's why. Um... So yeah, I think that's just about everything i got to cover about the difference between mechanicals and hybrids. Both of them, you have to know Ohm's Law. Hybrids, you really, really got to be careful about things like this. Like, I bought when I bought this, the pin was sticking out, and I thought it was an adjustable pin. So I 
I was like, all right, right on. I'll I'll use this with the noisy cricket. And I bought it. And it was only ten bucks, but um, but when I screwed it down out of the hybrid top and I made everything all all took up for battery rattle and everything, it um it pushed the pin flush, and I ended up almost dead shorting a battery. If I hadn't have caught it in time, I could have been into some serious trouble. Um. So just know your batteries, know your device, and know Ohm's Law. Really, that's all I can say. It's really, really easy to look it up. If you don't want to do all the math, there's an app for that. You don't have to worry. <laughs> um, it, there's an app on the, on the uh, Google Play Store that I know of for sure. It's just called Ohm's Law Calculator. You punch in two of the, of the uh, variables, and it'll give you the other two. So, for example, you know your batteries have 8.4 volts at full charge on a series. And you know that they are 20 amp batteries. You punch those two in, it's going to give you the, uh, sorry, it's going to give you the, the, uh, resistance, sorry. <laughs> it's going to give you the lowest safe resistance that you can build to, and it's going to give you the wattage that it's going to be putting out through the calculation. In fact, um, I'm going to hop over to the Ohm's Law app, and uh, I'll do a quick record of that, and I will show you how it works. Alright, so here we go. Here is the Ohm's Law Calculator app from Coopersoft. So, I know that my batteries... Da, 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 let's just do that calculation really quickly. So I know, at full charge... 8.4 volts is what I'm getting off of two batteries in series. I know that they are 20 amp. Actually, you know what? Let's do 30 amp cells just so that it's a different calculation. We push the button down here to get rid of the... the uh, Jeez, why can't I think today? <laughs> to get rid of the keyboard. And then we hit calculate. And bam! 30 amp cells. You can build down to 0.28 safely. And it's going to be giving you a wattage of... Point, uh, 252 watts so let's let's try something different let's go let's say we're gonna do a single cell device 4.2 volts we're gonna go 30 amps oops not 33 30 amps we'll get rid of that bam your lowest safe build is gonna be 0.14 and our, the wattage is gonna work out to 126 watts so let's go, let's do this again. Let's, uh, let's say we got my triple parallel, the rage box there. We're going to get rid of these values. And we're going to hit calculate. Bam! 0 0.047. <laughs> and 378 watts is what it's going to work out to. So if I wanted to build super low, like some, I don't know, 22 gauge sleeper parallel coils, I could build down to point oh. 0 0.05 and uh, and we would end up with 378 watts ish so now it's important to notice that it's not really truly 90 amps that you're getting off 330 amp cells um, but it does share the the amp load so that's kind of that's kind of the uh, the figures that I like to use just to make it easy on myself uh, that being said that's the Ohm's Law calculator app Really simple to use. Reset, ba ba ba. There's an ad, and it's free, so you get ads popping up all the time. You hit the help button if you need something, and that tells you exactly how to use it. Enter any two values into boxes and press calculate. The other values will then be calculated using the correct formula and results shown in red. Press a reset before starting a new calculation. I just <laughs> delete the things, and it usually ends up working out for me. So um that being said that's the that's the app so let's jump back and uh we'll we'll sign this off and we'll call it a day. all right so there you go it's you don't even have to know the math you can just punch in the values and it'll do it all for you um super easy free app it's it's a no-brainer now i want to take a minute um because Guys over in that uh, in in my favorite uh, mod safety group, 
Unregulated Mod Safety and Information on Facebook. Um, we were all talking about this news story that we saw. Um, guy's pocket blew up <laughs> in, in Minnesota or Minneapolis. I don't know. It was an M. It was an M place. Anyways, uh, we were all talking about it, and, and like, it just doesn't make sense to carry a battery around in your pocket when, when it's so easy to just accidentally throw your keys in there, and it would short circuit, it would start venting, it would get incredibly hot, and it would, like, in the video, kind of burst into flames. I mean, I haven't been able to make one blow up yet, but, um, but that's... That's because I was using um, an old cell. I mean, that's that's why I'm assuming it happened that way. I saw it happen on the video, and I've seen it happen on many videos. Um, so I'm going to try that experiment again in the coming, coming weeks or months. I'm not sure. I just picked up a new job, so it might be a while before I get to it. Um, mm. um but yeah, like, honestly, battery cases are like two bucks at at your local vape store. Like, it's it's just two dollars to get them to be safe. And if you don't want to spend the two bucks, if you're cheap like me, I've got, some, I've got a fix for you. So I have this M&M tube, this M&M Minis tube that I got from the dollar store because I wanted some candy and I wanted something to put... All my coils in um, because I'm a pack rat and I like to keep all my old coils um, and and I noticed something after I saw this video sorry just flashing my armpit like crazy there um, after I saw this video I was, I was trying to think of different ways to do it now I've, I've got a leather bag too somewhere kicking around here um, sorry I'm just like not prepared for this segment and so I've got this this leather bag. It came with a um, it came with one of those little square batteries that you use for charging your phone on the go. Um, that's what I normally use to carry my batteries around. Prevents the batteries from uh, short circuiting. Keep, keeps them away from conductive materials. Um, but I also noticed this. I it the M and M Minis too. Perfectly fits two 18650 batteries, and might even fit 26650s. Come to think of it, so do I have a tape measure? Nope, because I'm not prepared. <laughs> I will find out if this will fit a 26650. I will find my tape measure and I put the. Oh, there it is. Okay. I know where my tape measure is. I will put in the description whether this will fit a 26650s or not. Uh, I'll measure the inside diameter. But yeah, two 18650s, bam, you're safe. And you get a bunch of candy. It was like a dollar. Um, like, if you don't want to spend the extra dollar, that might be the answer for you. Just don't blow yourself up. <laughs> it's... It's not worth the burns, it's not worth the pain, it's not worth the damage you do to yourself and to the vaping community, especially when we're under so much fire um, for dry knuckles and arm cramps and the like. Mm. Anyways, I digress. Battery safety mod safety, it all starts with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of research. Just take the time to really know what device you want to use and and do, do all the research before you even bother picking it up. You need These are things you need to know. Um, if you're a, a new vapor and you think that uh, a noisy cricket might be the thing for you, do the research. <laughs> because the last thing you want is to end up with a mod blown up in your face because you built this like you would build uh, your your Rillo and you built it down to point one right on the nose and you you went to fire it and you blew the batteries up because of uh, because 
you, the uh, build was too low and it uh, was too many amps for your battery. Go, go check out Battery Mooch's uh, charts. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Take a look at the Ohm's Law stuff. Um, it's, it's dirt cheap to get that app. Free. Free 99. Um, can't go wrong. That being said, we don't need to see our, our fellow vapors get hurt. It's not fun to watch somebody get hurt. Um, I guess that's all I got for this video. So, be safe. Thanks for joining me on this vape safety journey. We're done with this this whole vape safety series now. Um, next Next month... I may start off by trying to blow up another battery. I might just buy a new battery and try to blow it up. Just for fun. I'll do it in the daytime too so you can see it better. And uh, try to have it a little better set up. But, um, yeah. I think that's all I got for this one. I think that's all we got. Let's call this a day. Thanks for watching. If, you're, if you like the video, let me know the comments if you didn't like the video let me know in the comments if you thought i could do something better let me know in the comments um join me on sunday for the for the next vlog we should be right on time for that one um we'll start back up with the reviews next week as well on fridays um next review is going to be the stingray i'm gonna do the stingray next because that's a fun one it's cool it it breaks down into like all sorts of different things and like look how tiny and awesome this is if i unscrew this put it into 18 350 mode i mean you can't really build anything super low on it because there's no super high lamp limit batteries but i mean look at that it's just so tiny and i throw let's throw the tugboat on that's no let's throw the aeolus on that looks super cool and tiny like look how little and itty bitty and stealthy that is so that's the aeolus on top of the 18350 Stingray. And that's a tugboat. It's like almost double the size with the velocity on top. So yeah, Stingray. Tune in next week. Tune in for the vlog if you are so interested. That's all I got. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again. Cheers, guys.